Hey everybody, welcome to another video and today we're going to be making koji rice and that's basically rice that's been inoculated with Aspergillus rice. It's a fungus commonly known as koji and so be sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to share with you a couple of really cool ideas on how to ferment this like the different kinds of chambers you could use that don't cost a whole lot of money and that way you can have some really cool ideas to make this stuff at home. What we're going to do to get started is we're going to measure out some sushi rice. If you don't have sushi rice, you could use regular white rice, especially if this is your first time. And you want to rinse it really well to where the majority of the water runs clear. It's not entirely necessary that it runs crystal clear, but you just want most of the water to run clear. And then you're going to let it soak in water for about 12 hours. And set it to the side and you can put a little cover right on top of it and it's uh, in about 12 hours we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna put it in a sieve or a colander and we're gonna let it drain uh, the knee excess water for about two hours and so what we want to do is we want the rice soaked up and uh, drained so that it doesn't have too much excess water in a steamer I'm throwing in some cheesecloth that I'm gonna use to sanitize it and any cheesecloth will work. Cloth will work. I could put a link as to where I got mine. I got mine from Amazon. And uh, same thing with the spores. I'll put a link. I got those from Gym Cultures. And if you don't want to make koji rice, but you want koji rice, I'll put a link as to where you could buy that from Amazon. Once you have those steamed and uh, cooked and sanitized, you're going to go ahead and lay them out. They're going to cool slightly. You're going to put your rice right on top of them. I've tried this a couple different ways. This particular way gave me the absolute best results. I did try to buy koji rice from Amazon and prop try to propagate it, um, but I, it, I found that the, the end result was a very weak culture that, uh, that wasn't thriving much like this is. And so if you're going to make koji rice, it's better to just use the spores. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our steamer. Four pounds for this little steamer was perfect. So I'm actually doing multiple batches for our project. And you're going to let it steam for 50 minutes. 50 minutes. And after 50 minutes of steaming, you're going to pull it out and you're going to let it cool. And basically what you're going to try to do in this next step is you're going to inoculate that rice once it's cooled down to below 105, 106 degrees. You don't want it too hot. And so spread your rice out and mix it up a little bit with a spoon that helps it cool down but inevitably time is going to be the factor here so once uh, enough time has passed and it cools down you can inoculate it with your spores uh, if you don't have a, a kitchen thermometer then um, you definitely want to try to get your hands on one this is one called the javelin pro 150 degrees the one on my right is the thermopin i'll put a link to both of those these are awesome kitchen thermometers Anyway, 105 is perfect. Uh, on the stove top, I've got about a quarter cup of rice flour that I'm just sanitizing. And to that rice flour, I'm going to add my koji spores. Notice they're green. And the reason I do this is a lot like the reason you would add grass seed and sand together when you're seeding a lawn. It just makes the distribution a whole lot easier. I also found that the rice flour... Uh, because the first time I didn't, I didn't use rice flour. The rice flour actually coats the grains of rice, and it leaves uh, the rice really um, independent of each other, and so they don't stick together. And the koji actually likes the rice flour; it's kind of like food for the uh, for the rice. And so I found that this particular method produced the most consistent results with an end product that wasn't clumpy and mushy and stuck together and so inevitably that's the goal so i've got my cooled s steamed rice that's been inoculated with rice flour and koji spores and at this point we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up and uh, i'm trying to create a high humidity environment for koji to grow and so you want to put a piece of plastic wrap on top but try to leave, let's say, like the sides open. You don't want to lock it down so that it can breathe. And now I'm going to put it in my fermentation chamber. And really all this is is a smoker from smoking it. <laughs> and I love this smoker because I can bring the temperatures very, very low, really to like mid-70s if I want to. 
But in this case, I'm going to start off at about 90 degrees, and um, I've got a tray of water in there. So I uh, check it about every 12 hours, and you're going to notice that after about hour 20, the temperature of the inside of your rice is going to start to dramatically increase. So my temperature for my smoker is set at 90 degrees, 92, and my temperature inside the rice is 105. And if it gets to the point where it starts getting over 103, you want to just mix it a little bit. So I'll, all I have in my chamber right now is a computer fan, that's what that black cable was, uh, a tray of water, and then the rice. And so uh, at 20, hour 20, at 105 degrees, I'm going to take the rice out and I'm going to mix it. And I'm just going to put some gloves on and with some, you know, uh, with my fingertips, I'm just going to mix the rice around. And what this is going to do is this is going to really reduce the temperature and, um, and then I'm going to pop it back in the chamber. There's two schools when it comes to making koji rice. One is the school that mixes it often and it allows for a deeper penetration of the Aspergillus oryzae, and the other school is one that doesn't mix it very often, but you get a very thick and fluffy like cloud of uh, fungus growth directly on the top. And uh, truly, I'm not entirely sure which one's more beneficial. I like the deeper penetration aspect of, um, of the rice, and so I did mix mine about every 12 hours. And notice I'm making little hills and valleys with my fingers, little, you know. And so I'm just creating these, like, uh, waves uh, within the rice, and then I'm mixing it around. And uh, cover it back up and pop it in my chamber. So notice the temperature has dropped about 10 degrees. And we're going to pop it back in the chamber. And at, at hour 20 uh, to hour 48, this stuff starts to really grow. It should smell relatively sweet. You shouldn't see anything other than white growing. Um, if you see black and red and things like that, well, that means you've got a problem. And if you let it go too long, you know, really at 60 hours, at 72 hours, it's going to start to grow yellow. And then it'll eventually turn green. And at that point, you've got spores. And so, you know, you've, you've made, you've, you've allowed it to uh, bloom. So this is uh, completely finished. This is roughly hour 48. And um, when I break up these pieces, you can see how easy they are to break up. So the, the rice isn't mushy, which is a great sign that it wasn't overcooked. Uh, and that's really critical. The uh, koji, when you, when, you, when you pull these pieces off, can, you can definitely see the growth between all of the rice. And, um, and that's really what you want. And so this is going to be a perfect time for me to dry it. And when I dry it, I want to dry it at roughly about 85 degrees for a couple of days. And then, you know, you could store it in a bag and pop it in the freezer and use it whenever you want to use it. But uh, this particular product is used to make all sorts of things from sake to, you know, miso uh, to soy sauce. You can make uh, shio koji and amazaki and all kinds of really great things. Okay, let's talk about fermentation chamber options. My favorite is a smoker, specifically this one, because I can control the temperature of the box. I have a bunch of preset options that allow me to raise or lower the temperature based off of time. And then it, obviously it keeps the temperature of the ferment. This is a great option. I'll put a link below. This is an egg incubator. And all you would do is you would add water to the little chambers at the bottom. And you would put a small tin or a small batch of your rice inoculated with koji. And then it's got a small fan and a heater. And this thing just keeps the humidity high, like at 90%. And it also keeps the temperature uh, fairly consistent, give or take one degree. As long as you make sure that you may, you watch the temperature of your koji, you should be fine. This is a wonderful economical option because most people already have this available at their house. And all you do is you turn the light on inside your oven, put a tray of water in there, and then pop your uh, rice that's been inoculated with koji. And you want to just monitor to make sure that it doesn't get too hot, um, the rice itself, and just give it a little stir. But this is a great way to do it. And then finally, another economical option uh, is a plastic bin that allows you to simply put a light bulb and a tray of water and then your plate of rice inoculated with koji. And as long as you monitor the temperature, you should be fine as well. And so have fun with it. If you have any questions on how to make rice koji 
leave me a comment in the comment section below. And uh, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. We'll see you in the next video.